Hi, good morning. It's Jim from the Mavstar Observatory. Guys, um, I want to talk about a few of the plans that we've got coming up for this year with the observatory and putting more equipment out in the field. But before I do, I just want to say a big thanks to the few people that are really making it happen and you know chipping in on the PayPal link down there and joining us on Patreon. Because without you guys, we can't put any more equipment out. You know, even just mailing it out to international countries, you know, costs twenty but. 20 bucks easy no so you know when we're talking about sending four more magnetometers out another couple of muon detectors you can imagine you know that's 100 pounds straight off um and that's not to mention how much it costs to build this stuff as well um so yeah big thanks to you guys and you know if i can just encourage a few more to step in and help us um so i'm going to talk about these jet streams in a little while i just want to talk about what i'm planning to do this year I want to get a total of 15 uh, magnetometers out around the world in different locations. Uh, we're going to select the locations um, of interest based on the highest and lowest magnetic intensity in that region. And as you guys know, uh, we want to put one of our muon detectors in Brazil because it is one of the weakest regions. It comes under that region of the South Atlantic anomaly. Um, and it'll be interesting to know just how much cosmic radiation is actually getting through there in that region as opposed to a strong region like safe central Australia uh, because that's where we're going to put another muon detector as well and of course we've got one here in the UK but in total I'd like to get 15 uh, muon detectors out and 15 magnetometers out so we can get a good idea as to what's going on around this world on top of that we're starting a small project uh, if you live in the UK you'll know where Warwickshire is um, in a couple of months time we'll be hopefully uh, liaising with the schools and we're going to select 10 schools out of Warwickshire to house 10 CO2 detectors and you know guys I'm being a bit crafty here because what I'm trying to do is get the kids involved first of all and encourage them to you know take an interest in science and their environment because you know co2 is a big issue these days we all know what the governments are saying around the world and we all know pretty much uh, that co2 is a stealth tax and you know it isn't a problem like what they're making out and in any case co2 has risen uh, several times over the last 400,000 years if we look at temperature record it follows the temperature so if temperature goes up co2 goes up and the reason for that is is because the sea uh, warms up and as a result of that, it releases more CO2 into the atmosphere. If we just go back 12,000 years, we've enjoyed a moderately high level of temperature, which is unusual comparing it over the last four periods uh, in the 400-year history where CO2 has gone up with temperature. But because temperature hasn't held like it has recently over the last 12,000 years, it's dropped straight back off. CO2 has followed it. And, you know, when the CO2... Sorry, when the temperatures drop the ocean temperatures drop and it's therefore able to hold more CO2. A good analogy, if you want to do this experiment, is buy a couple of cans of beer, put one in your living room at room temperature, around 27 degrees, put one in the freezer and try and drop it down to, you know, one or two degrees and then open each can. And you'll find that one will release a lot more gas than the other and that will be the one that's at room temperature. And that just gives you a good analogy of how, you know, our water, our oceans around the world release that co2 when the temperature is you know increased so i'm looking at this jet stream today and you know we're seeing a lot of these uh, coil jet streams that start off in the subtropics but then take it straight up like in this case um, you know we almost end up with a vertical jet stream going straight up into the polar region that can only drop a load of snow in a short period of time um, and then you know, with it bringing back down this cold temperature from the polar regions back into the subtropics, it's going to do the opposite and drop a load of rain. Uh, you can see that in some cases these jet streams are well over a thousand miles in width. And, you know, it isn't, it isn't the norm. Our jet streams are not supposed to look like this. We're supposed to have a nice wavy ring around the polar jet stream and then, you know, a little bit lower in the subtropics, a nice wavy jet stream there. And this should be the same for the northern and southern hemispheres. So, you know, on top of this, you know, with the subsea at temperatures that the uh, lower lying uh, jet stream brings, you know, it just forces those temperatures down 
uh, lower latitudes and that's why a lot of records are getting broke at the moment uh, for the first time or first seen for 500 you know years you know in in these regions like you know the safe uh, china islands that's one of the places where you know they've experienced record breaking sub zero temperatures and you know as a result they've lost thousands of heads of cattle and also you know crops and uh, we're seeing a lot affect china right now and the, what i'm talking about is um, with this coronavirus and i can't help be a little bit suspicious here you know having a bit more time to think about it i think it's very coincidental that china was having a lot of problem with its public um, and you know uh, government staff with protests just shortly before this uh, pandemic broke out and I know a lot of people aren't calling it a pandemic yet or they wouldn't like to but that is exactly what it is this thing has spread to almost every country I think the only country that hasn't got it or the only continent that hasn't got it is Antarctica right now so I think it's very suspicious a lot of experts are excited about this uh, professional experts in the biological industries because this is the first time that this virus has ever been seen and again i think that that's suspicious i th you know want to know what my thoughts are on this i think it was released in a manner to control those um upheavals that was taking place a few months ago uh with the government staff in china and it was selected as a uh, non-lethal biological uh, means of controlling people we know it doesn't kill everybody that get it we know that it only attacks the vulnerable but the fear of it being uh, widely spread and many thousands of people dying of it is enough to have you know achieved a target if you like and that target is it's got the people off the streets and stopped them protesting but if that is the case this could easily lead to a war because if china are found to have released this in a manner to control their population um, and stop these uh, protests taking place well it's leaked hasn't it it's leaked all around the world and you know like i say if it does come back to china and they do admit it which i don't think they would ever do that but at the end of the day this did start in china but if they did admit it then they owe the world a lot of compensation don't they because you know there's a lot of vulnerable people with respiratory problems that have already you know subdued and died to this so it's a, it's a you know it's a crazy world we're living in you know people will do pretty much anything for money and anything to keep control of power and uh, it's it's not a nice place is it it almost replicates what was said in the bible and a certain behavior will return you know people will do pretty much anything these days to get their hands on the money and you know it's a strange thing money is because i was thinking about this yesterday you know a 10 pound note is somebody's sweat and labor it could be a man or a woman's and you know how hard it is for yourselves to earn a 10 pound note it isn't sometimes easy it probably takes longer than an hour to achieve if you're on minimum wage um you know those 10 pounds are very much your sweat and labor well i think it's more than that i think it's a soul uh you know part of a person's soul you know they have had to sacrifice their time and you know when we think about it we don't have a great deal of time on this planet you know less than a hundred years in the majority of cases so you know you sacrifice your hours you are sacrificing a bit of your life and you know it is a bit of a soul and you know it makes me wonder you know why do people want trillions of pounds in the bank in the first place that is like collecting a lot of people's souls isn't it and um you know there is a person isn't there that is associated with collecting souls and then we're talking about the devil quite clearly aren't we you know not a lot of people have made a connection in the bible and i don't know the exact chapters but you will find there's a mention of a certain amount of numbers and it, it's to do with understanding the nature of the beast or you can work out uh, what that beast is and those numbers are of course 666 but there is one other place in the bible that that is mentioned 666 and that is in kings and i can't remember the chapter but if you're really interested i'll dig it out for the next video but if you google it 
you'll come across it because it's talking about 666 shekels of gold coming to somebody in the book so we've got you know at, in revelations the mention of uh, 666 telling us that we can understand or work out the nature of the beast and then in another part of the book in king section uh, kings i think it is there's a mention of 666 shekels and i think the nature of the beast is money and it says you'll either have it in your palm or you'll have it in your forehead so if you've either got the money in your hand uh, you can trade or if you haven't got the money in your hand you're going to be thinking about it in your head how to get it and uh, I just think that that is again a little bit more of a coincidence could be synchronicity could be exactly what they was trying to direct us to beans as in Kings that's the only second place it's mentioned in the Bible but you know guys we are in strange times we really are I wonder sometimes what's going on in the Vatican with the Pope whether he sits there sometimes like we do in thought you know thinking to himself you know does he himself uh, the human appointed next man to God even believe in God himself I really wonder if so then why allow priests to marry the same sex you know because you would think that the Pope would understand that in the Bible God destroyed a city because of that behaviour was taking place so why would you know the Pope allow you know marriages of the same sex you know I'm not bashing gay people here guys you know they can for all I care they can do what they want I'm just saying that there is a lot of mention in the book about certain behaviours and that certain um, destructions came shortly after this was plentiful in, in number and we see this don't we in our world we see a lot of it now becoming the norm and even the Vatican have modernised their um, methods in order to include these new things in the society in order to stay in with the crowd and I don't think it's right because I think you know there is a warning in the back of the Bible about adding anything and taking anything away and it results in either things being added to your life or things being removed from your life and uh, you know why I believe um, some of the things in that book because I brought to you an equation which showed that this universe is conscious if it's conscious then you know if, if, if it's going around creating in a conscious mathematical manner then it's got to be conscious hasn't it and isn't that what a lot of people would probably describe as their god or as I would just say simply prime creator it doesn't matter what name you give him uh, or it you know it is for real and you know it is part of nature absolutely and not just the nature of this planet but the nature of our solar system the nature of our galaxy and you know the nature of the universe you know it all abides by you know this um, mathematical equation it's a binary system that is taking place and creating on that on that level only doesn't use the same numbers as what we do for some reason never really worked out why that was it uses instead of zeros and ones like we use binary this uses zeros and nines maybe it's a higher form of binary but we we know don't we from that equation that it always comes down to a zero or a nine no matter what numbers you put in there and you can put in numbers to the point of infinity if you've got the time to break it back down it will filter it into just two numbers so you know guys a lot going on in our world and you can't help but not trust a lot of people can you and governments because you know their behavior is becoming more popular Lee you know they're, they're blatant they don't even really care anymore but how does it affect us well it all seems to point to one thing doesn't it food production and you know lack of food production means that you can't sustain big cities and big populations and we've seen the exact same thing happen to you know our ancient civilizations and their cities and towns when the food stopped or something changed in the cropping season you know no food came into the city and it was no longer worth being in there you know most people went back to hunter gathering and left the cities because they stood more of a chance of obtaining that food 
So we are back there, guys, I think. It, it, it isn't long. I think we are on borrowed time with regards to all of what is taking place. And I think that we have just hit one of our um, you know, obstacles in the gauntlet, which I talk about a lot. And that being, you know, this um, coronavirus. I know the majority of us are going to get it without a doubt. Probably 98% of the population of this earth are going to get coronavirus and are going to live. But there's probably 2 or 3% which ain't going to make it. And that don't mean it's okay. Because, you know, these are vulnerable people uh, that are going to lose their lives and not strong enough to, you know, as we've already seen, fight the virus off. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, it's it's not just uh, coronavirus. People die of, uh, you know, pneumonia and and common colds. But this is a little bit worse than that. And the rate at which it's spread across the world should be an eye-opener for everyone. Because if this was a lethal, lethal virus, it would have killed everyone in its path. And it would have probably finished off you know, human humanity on the planet, if it had been. And that's not to say that something like this can't come about again, because it has happened again in our history, guys. So we have to keep our eye on the ball. It's not to say that this can't mutate into something worse as well. You know, this has got all the um, characteristics of something that could be absolutely lethal. It just so happens that, you know, people that have got it, they are strong enough to fight it off. I've met, got made it over it. So, you know, strange times and crazy times and, you know, frightening times as well. So, guys, I'm going to leave it here. Um, you know, we're at the beginning of the month. It would be great to start this month off uh, with a few uh, pounds raised for the observatory. And, you know, I'll just mention that the link is there. And you know what, guys? Um, I'll say what I usually do. You know, it's Sunday. Enjoy a great Sunday with your family. And I'll say what I usually do. Bye for now.